Hey everyone, in today's video, I wanna share five of my favorite subtraction games for a K through two classroom that are really going to help your students become fluent with their subtraction skills. For this video, I wanted to do a roundup of different types of games. So some of the games are gonna be more hands-on to work on that concrete learning. Others are going to be more print and play, representational or abstract type games, uh, again, to help build that fluency. There's also at least two, maybe three, but at least two freebies in this video for you to grab. So be sure to watch to see how you can get those. All right, if you're ready to see five of my favorite subtraction games, give this video a like, subscribe to my channel. Let's get started. My first favorite game for subtraction is called Build and Remove. Now, this is going to be a hands-on concrete type of game that I definitely introduce towards the beginning of my students learning about subtraction. So towards the beginning of the unit where I really want them using manipulatives to have an entire group of things and actually take some away and find the difference, this is perfect for that type of learning. Also, this is a great activity for students who are struggling with subtraction um, to kind of take them back a few steps, have them work with manipulatives again and really understand the process before moving on to abstract equations. Here's a picture of what build and remove looks like. This is from my subtraction unit for first grade and it's basically a let's subtract sheet um, and you can see here that it has two 10 frames on there because we're going to work with subtraction within 20. Then I have a bunch of these little cards here that say build and remove. So it will say build 12, remove 9. What's the difference? Of course, I would model with my students how to do this, but again, I love this towards the beginning of a subtraction unit because students have to actually go ahead and build that 12. Um, if they are working with numbers over 10, I look for them to fill that 10 frame first and then add the additional two. And then they have to actually physically remove nine of them to figure out what the difference is and they'll write the difference in that box there. Now those colored cards over on the side, I laminate them and the board. And then students just use this with a wet erase or a dry erase marker to be done over and over again. That activity, build and remove, is definitely a concrete one. Again, I want them building a number, practicing that one-to-one -one correspondence or unitizing if the number's over 10, and then they actually have to physically remove to find the difference. I also like that the cards say the word difference on there for a little subtraction vocabulary. And I like this because you can definitely extend this activity as well. After I've had my students do this once or twice, I like to give them either scrap paper or a whiteboard and marker. And instead of just building, removing, and writing the answer in the card, I want them to go ahead and write the subtraction equation underneath it or not underneath it, sorry, but on the scrap paper or on the whiteboard. So here they are connecting the actual physical concrete with the abstract. They're seeing what that subtraction equation actually looks like, feels like, and then they can figure out the difference. Now that board and those cards are in my subtraction for first grade unit that was done, you know, a million years ago. Um, I hope you can see that it's pretty simple if you wanna use it in your classroom. You could just get some 10 frames, have them on the board, and then just type up a bunch of cards that say build, nine, remove three. What's the difference? Build, remove, fill in the difference. I had made that as the counterpart to my free build it cards, which are addition based. Here's what these look like. And again, these are addition, but these are completely free over on TPT where students are doing something similar. Here they go ahead and build a number using blocks and then they add a certain amount more. So here we see build four, add eight more, what is the sum? And instead of doing this on a tens frame, which again, you could definitely use as an extension, I just have them build it using two different colors so they can clearly see the two parts as they make that whole. I know this is a subtraction video, but I'll link that freebie down in the description for you as well. All right, subtraction game number two is a class favorite. This is a print and play game and it is called Number Crash. Let me show you how this works. All right, this game is called Number Crash. There are two different versions of this game. Uh, we have the A version, which is going to be differences within, or subtraction within 11, actually. It's going to be the highest number. And then the other version goes up to 20. So there are two different game boards for you. But this is a partner game. So students will each have their own little game cube and they start on start. And they will have to do two things. They will spin the spinner, nine, and they will roll the die. They'll always do the spinner minus the die. So we have nine minus three. That difference is six. So I will move to the closest difference here. Player two will go eight minus 
2. 8 minus 2 is also 6. Since this is the first one, we actually already have our crash. Whenever students happen to land on the same number, the same difference, they crash and have to both go back to start. So then we go again. 8 minus 2. Oh my goodness. Here we go. 6. See if we get something else. 11 minus 3. 11 minus 3 is 8. This player gets to go all the way to the first difference of 8. And students just go back and forth, but every time, again, they land on that same number, they crash, and they both get sent back to zero. The winner will be the first player to make it to the end, which is going to be a difference of five. So whoever can make it there first without getting crashed wins the game. Now, the way the game is set up, there does happen to be a lot of crashes, which is a good thing, um, because then they are, you know, forced to go back to the beginning and practice that fluency again, right? They have to keep spinning and subtracting and moving. Subtraction game number three that I love is called Fill the Spaces. Now, this is another print and play game, just like Number Crash. It actually comes from the same unit. Um, this one I have available for free for you though, so I'll put that as a freebie linked down in the description. But here is a picture of what this looks like. Now, this is a very simple game that I like using to help develop fluency with subtraction. Um, but basically, the board looks like this right here. It'll say fill the spaces at the top, and it has a little 10 up there with a die next to it. Now, you can see that there are some empty spaces in the board, and the goal of the game is to fill the spaces, hence the title of the game. All students need to play this game is one die, the game board, and then two different colored crayons or colored pencils. And all students will do is take turns rolling the die, and that is going to be the number they subtract from 10. That's why the 10 is up there. This is going to be fluency with subtraction within 10. Um, so students can hopefully quickly start recognizing um, these differences. So if they roll a 3, 10 minus 3 equals 7, and whoever's turn it is will take their colored pencil and fill in one of the blanks or one of the spaces in that row of 7. Then the next student will go ahead and roll that die and repeat the process. So if they roll a 6, they will do 10 minus 6 equals 4, and they will take their colored pencil and fill in the space in that row of 4. Students just take turns rolling, subtracting, and filling the spaces until they are all filled in. Now the game part comes in when if students roll the die and that difference is no longer available on the board, then their turn is skipped and it gets passed to the next person. So they will continue back and forth um, until the whole board is filled in. And then at the end, they count up their color and see who got the most and that person is the winner. Now, while I developed that game for fluency, meaning I want my students to quickly be able to subtract that number from 10, uh, you could definitely add manipulatives as needed for your students. You always wanna give them either a piece of scrap paper if they need it, or like I said, cubes, manipulatives, something like that. And the goal of that would be able to slowly take those away as they no longer need it. All right, math game number four that I love to use with my students is called Subtraction Switcheroo. Now, this is one of my math mysteries that I came out with last year. I think I have about seven of them for different skills, but this is the subtraction one. Let me show you how it works. All right, for the Subtraction Switcheroo, I store each one in a file folder um, with the cover. So again, this is subtraction within 20. Um, and then each one, I usually store these in a Ziploc bag, but just to make it faster and easier. Um, this one has eight dogs and eight bones that need to get matched up. It also has eight different clues that look like this. They each say whose bone you're trying to find at the top. And then there is an answer key here to kind of show the final product. Once students have all the materials that will be in their file folder, they can go ahead and get started. Now each one has its own premise. Like I said, here we have bones and we have dogs. And for this mystery that you're trying to solve or that students are trying to solve, somebody stole all of the dog's bones and they hid them around the park. And you have to find which bone, they each have a number, belongs to which dog. So that is the subtraction theme. And in order to do that, students will have to figure out these clues. So here we can see we're gonna find out Bob's bone. Remember, each one at the top will have the picture of the dog and they will have its name and they'll have that, that's the clue. So here we have Bob and we're gonna find out which bone is his. To do that, they need to go ahead and solve these clues. So we have seven minus two, seven minus two is five, and then they go to the key, five is M. 11 minus 3 is 8. Oh.
So once they've solved all the subtraction problems like I did here, they will have a word clue. Now, as you can see, it doesn't just tell you what the answer is. It gives you another clue, more than eight. So that means I can already see this bone on top is nine. So I'm gonna assume that's it, and I did not do that on purpose. But you will look at all the clues and students can work together in their group, five, one, six, seven, three, two, and four. There's only one that matches that criteria. So Bob's bone must be nine. And they can write their answer right up here. Bob's bone is nine. And then I like to have students actually physically take the bones, match them up, and move it to the side. Then they can go ahead and solve another clue. Millie's bone. Now when doing these, I would work in a group and I would probably have students work in pairs of three or four. And there are eight different clues so they can divvy up the clues and have them solve and match each one. That way as they're solving and matching, if for some reason at the end, they think two different dogs have the bone four, uh, they can look at those clues, kind of dissect what's wrong and figure it out. Then when the entire group thinks that they are completely ready, they will fill in the answer key here. So Bob, we know is bone nine, and then as they solve the rest, they can fill it in, and they can pass it in and say, here we go, we solved the subtraction switcheroo. So I just showed you the hands-on version, which is how I would do this mostly with my students. I store them in manila folders. They kind of work together to solve the clues. Um, and I would probably do this in one math period so they can practice that. But then I do also have all of my math mysteries available in Google Slides and Seesaw if you wanted to make it an independent activity as well. For the sake of time, I won't go into exactly how that works, but essentially since it's independent, I do have a slide on there for students to uh, like put a star over the clues that they already solved because they probably wouldn't be able to solve all eight clues in one time period or one class period. So I do have something in there for them to keep track of the clues they already solved before finishing the whole mystery. I actually just got back from a conference I presented at in Charlotte, and at the end of our second and third grade session, we did a double digit addition and subtraction mystery, and they are just so much fun. The teachers had just as much fun as the kids did, and I got a lot of feedback saying that their kids would love activities like that. So I will actually link all the math mysteries down below, but this one specifically was called Subtraction Switcheroo, and it was with subtraction within 20. So I'll list the category, but then you can find that specific one. For your students. And subtraction game number five that I love to use with my students is called Rat Trap. Now this is going to be another print and play game that you can again have students use manipulatives if they need it, have them use scrap paper as they need it, or if they are ready they can do this with subtraction strategies they already know in their head. Now before I show you what this looks like I have a version for subtraction within 10, within 20, within 50, within 100, and within 1000. So your freebie for this one there's actually five different boards based on your students needs. So let me show you what it looks like. Here's the game board. This is the subtraction within 20 version, which you can see in the top right corner. Um, if it's within 10, 50, whatever it is will be listed up there. But students will basically take turns rolling a die to find the difference they are looking for in the grid. So if students roll a one, they are looking for an equation with a difference of seven. If they roll a five, they are looking for a difference of 12. This game is a bit more advanced as they are matching the difference to the equation instead of, you know, looking at an equation and trying to find the difference. So this is one that I would use later in my subtraction unit. But all students will do is once they find an equation that matches the difference they're looking for, they will cover it with a cube. So for example, if they rolled a one and they're looking for a difference of seven, they could cover this 10 minus three equation over in the top left. And they'll do that with their color cube or counter or whatever you're using. But you do want students to have different color manipulatives. Then player number two will go and let's pretend they roll a two and they're looking for a difference of eight. They could go ahead and cover up that nine minus one equation because nine minus one equals eight. Students keep rolling, finding the correct equation to match the difference and covering the boxes until they trap a rat. And the way that they actually trap a rat is by building a box around one of the rats. And the winner for this game would be the player who can place their last cube to trap the rat. So it doesn't matter if you both have cubes going around the rat, it's the person who gets to put the last cube there to finally trap it that wins the game. Like I said, that game is a little trickier because instead of getting an equation and finding the difference, they're reversing that thinking. 
um, and they have to roll the die to match the difference. So it requires a couple layers of thinking, which is great for students, but it's also a whole lot of fun seeing who can trap that rat first. And like I mentioned, I have five different boards with subtraction within different numbers, 10, 20, 50, 100, and 1000. So it really is great for kindergarten through second grade. I will link that freebie down in the description as well. So there you have five of my favorite subtraction games to play in a primary classroom. I hope you can see from most of them that you can really differentiate based on the needs of your students by giving them manipulatives or scrap paper, and then really building towards that fluency of being able to solve subtraction without those pieces. Just for a quick recap, we have build and remove, we have number crash, we have fill the spaces, we have subtraction switcheroo or any of the math mysteries, and we have rat trap. And like I said earlier, Rat Trap and Fill the Spaces are completely free and they will be linked down in the description. I will of course link everything down below in the description and just so you know, if you are in the SJT Math Club, all of these games and activities are already in the club for you. If you look under the subtraction section, you will either go to hands-on games or print and play games to find what you are looking for. And if you're looking for the digital versions of the math mysteries, it's under the digital section. Just wanted to make sure you knew that before I end this video. As always, I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please give it a thumbs up so I know. Make sure you are subscribed to my channel and click that bell. That way you're notified of every new video. See you in the next one. Bye.